Hello YouTube, and on today's video I'm going to share with you all my Nintendo Switch Collection update because I did a Switch Collection last year and it's changed a lot, it's grown a lot. Um, you know, I've sold some stuff off, just, you know, stuff like that. So, let's get into it. So I'm going to go through all the games that I haven't played yet. So these are still sealed, so we got Owl Boy. Haven't played it yet, heard it's really great. Uh, so the Switch... A lot of stuff is on sale right now, uh, so I have a bunch of stuff I need to play and whatnot, but yeah. So, Umihara Kawase Fresh. Uh, I haven't played this yet, but I've played a couple games in the series, and I've heard some really great things about this one, so excited to try that. Assassin's Creed uh, Black Flag, the Rebel Collection. Mega Man ZX Legacy Collection. I can't wait to play this. I need to pop this in soon because uh, Mega Man Zero Three and Zero Four are two of my favorite Mega Man games. So need to pop this in soon. Killer Queen Black. Uh, let's see, L.A. Noire and Dragon Quest Eleven. So I've actually I own this on PS4. Then when the Switch version came out, I sold my PS4 version, bought the Switch version, but I haven't felt like playing it again yet. Uh, Dragon Quest XI is a brilliant RPG, one of the best I've ever played in my opinion. Uh, absolutely incredible game. Uh, you know, I just haven't felt like playing it again though, because it's, you know, quite a long game. Uh, but yeah, so we got Max, The Curse of the Brotherhood. Um, this was, this is kind of like, uh, Oddworld or something like that, but nowhere near as compelling as an Oddworld, like, yeah, it wasn't very great, wouldn't, wouldn't recommend it. On the other hand, though, New Super Lucky Tail, absolutely fantastic 3D platformer, uh, really love it, really cutesy, really charming, uh, great game. Nino Kuni, uh, Wrath of the White Lich. I didn't play this too much. I only played a couple hours of it, but it seemed pretty good. Uh, I have the, you know, I have the second game on PS4. I actually kind of like that one more, but, you know, whatever. Uh, Pokemon Shield, which I did a lot of streams of. Um, I don't know. It was kind of just okay, in my opinion. Nothing incredible, but nothing bad either. Um... We got River City Girls, which I bought a Japanese copy of because I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, this is a beat 'em up. Uh, I didn't play it too much. I didn't really. I don't know. I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. Like I thought I, I went into it thinking I'd love it, but eh. So we got uh, High Rule Warriors uh, Definitive Edition. Yeah, yeah, Definitive Edition. This is the European copy, because for some reason, Amazon uh, sent me this. Um, but Hyrule Warriors is a ton of fun. I, on the occasion, enjoy Destiny, Destiny Dynasty Warriors, and this uh, quells my thirst for it, I guess, on the Switch. Uh, you know, I'm a big Zelda fan, so I appreciate all the fan service. Atelier Ryza. I need to play more of. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Absolutely fantastic Metroidvania. And I think the Switch version has finally caught up to the PS4 and PC version. So I feel pretty comfortable in saying this is the version to get of the game. Because, uh, you know, I really like my Metroidvanias on the go. And, you know, just absolutely incredible game. I uh, really loved it. Luigi's Mansion 3, which I... <sighs> So, the whole thing was, I got this, um, last year, I played through Luigi's Mansion 1 and Dark Moon, and, uh, then I was like, alright, I'm ready for Luigi's Mansion 3, uh, but nope, I was wrong, because, uh, I was burnt out on Luigi's Mansion, so I started this game, and I played it for, like, two hours, and I didn't get much further than that. I need to play it some more, because I did really like it, it was just one of those things where, you know... You can only play so much Luigi's Mansion, you guys. Super Neptunia RPG. So I did a stream of this game, uh, and I haven't played it after that stream, uh, but I did really like what I played. Um, yeah. 
Oh man. Here we go. Uh, Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon. Everybody, I believe, is the name for this. Um, so this is a pretty much a game in the Mystery Dungeon series. If you're familiar with like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, this is an HD port of a Wii game. Um, and it has, you know, a few trappings of a Wii game, but, uh, I really love this game. It's a Final Fantasy spinoff, and it's really charming. You play as a Chocobo, um, super fun game. I, I, I really recommend it. We have Collection of Mana. Um, this is, this has, uh, Secret of Mana, Trials of Mana, which was released for the first time in English, and then... Final Fantasy Adventure, which is the first Secret of Mana game in Japan, and uh, you know it's it's pretty good. I I quite liked this collection, although you know I don't know. It was thirty bucks, and I feel like honestly speaking, I feel like it should have had one or two more games in it. I don't know. Like there was a Secret of Mana, no, a uh, Final Fantasy Adventure remake on the Game Boy Advance called Legend of Mana. I think if they would have included that, I feel like, you know, it would have been a great, um, inclusion, but, you know, whatever. Uh, Gal Metal, so, this is an interesting game because, uh, I am absolutely horrible at rhythm music games, uh, this is a rhythm music game, I'm saying rhythm really weird, but yeah, um, I am absolutely horrible at them, and, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, so I can't really play this too well, but I picked it up for uber cheap, uh, and it's pretty good. I, I really like the style and everything, like, uh, rhythm games are so frustrating for me because I really love, like, rhythm game styles and the music and everything, but, like, I cannot play them. Uh, this is another sealed game, SNK Heroines, uh, haven't played it. Heard it's kind of on the mess side. I got it for, like, ten bucks, so... I'm not expecting too much out of that. Namco Museum arcade pack. So, back in the olden days, Namco would do all of these, uh, you know, Namco Museum releases, and they would sell fairly well back in the olden days. Um, but the whole thing was like, okay, this had like 12 arcade games uh, for forty dollars, and it's just like no. Um, granted, I do think they went with like. Some good picks because it's stuff like Sky Kids, Bladder House, um, Galaga 99, Galaga 88, my bad. Um, you know, Rolling Thunder 2. Like, all these Namco games that never get re released actually got re released for once. Uh, but, you know, like, it's just one of those things. Like, I can't, like, for $40, it's like, man, this was overpriced. I, I think, like, 20 bucks would have been better. Uh, Horizon Chase Turbo. So this is weird, because this is the special edition, but, um, all it came with was that art card. And this is a fantastic racing game. I don't normally play racing games. I, I tend not to enjoy racing games, honestly speaking, but this was fantastic. Uh, highly, highly recommend this. Um, yeah, really great game. You had Ease 8, Walk. Wakrimosa of Dana. Um, I I didn't like this one that much, honestly speaking. I don't know, just something about it just didn't click with me. I'm a huge action RPG fan, and you know something about it just I didn't like. I don't know, like I might need to recheck this one out because I was playing it on the hardest difficulty, so uh, you know I might need to put it back in on, like, easier modes or something like that, but, you know, something about it just didn't click. We have Wild Guns Reloaded. This is another one that I wanted to really like this one, but, again, something about it just did not click with me. I, I don't know, just something held it back, in my opinion, and not in a good way. We have the Ninja Saviors, Return of the Warriors. This is a fantastic uh, 2D beat-em-up, um, really great game, really fun to play. My only one complaint is I can't beat it. 
Uh, the final boss, I think I tried for an hour to beat the final boss in this game, and I could not do it. Like, uh, um, it was so annoying and hard. I, I just couldn't do it. I gave up. We have Super Mario Maker 2. Uh, Super Mario Maker, you know, it. it's Super Mario Maker. Um, I can't really, it's great. I mean, I can't really say much else. Uh. We have Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE Encore. This is a really great uh, JRPG. Very Persona-esque. And in my opinion, that's a good thing. It fills a, you know, gap in the Switch's library that the Switch currently doesn't have. And that's, you know, Persona. Um, but the big thing I really like about it is the battle system. It has this incredible system called Encore. Where in which, like, if uh, you perform an attack and you're one of your teammates has the same like element they're do a follow-up attack just out of you know instinct and best of all it doesn't use like one of their actual turns so boss so like bosses and everything can just be like rushed down like super quickly uh super interesting great game uh let's see we have super bomberman r Ah, uh, eh, not, not very great. Um, a lot of fun in multiplayer, but other than that, you know, like I, I really like Bomberman, but yeah, uh, Tetris 99, uh, probably the best Switch game. <laughs> I don't know. Um, absolutely fantastic game. <laughs> I can't really. So I guess the funny thing about this is I never really actually play this, like this version of Tetris 99 very much, because uh, you have to put the card in the game, and that's just not very convenient. Whenever I want to play Tetris 99, I just turn on my Switch and play the download version. Starlink Battle for Atlas, a really great uh, spaceship exploration game. I don't know what exactly you would consider this. Um, kind of sad that this bombed horribly because it's a toys to life game although you don't really need the toys to show off to play the game uh kind of sad we have red faction gorilla remastered absolutely incredible game if you're looking for a like open world sandbox game uh this might be not the best one of all time, but just, like, in terms of, like, Grand Theft Auto-style games, you know, where you just go around destroying stuff on the map, this might be the best one, just because, like, it's so much fun to destroy stuff, and you have so many options and everything. It's it, it's absolutely incredible. This game is fantastic. And best of all, it has uh, gyro controls. Yoku's Island Express, absolutely incredible. 2D platformer, uh, Metroidvania, believe it or not, but uh, the big thing is that this game is a pinball game, but with, you know, platforming and everything, uh, absolutely incredible game, highly recommend it. Very sad that that fell completely under the radar, to me at least. We have All Star Fruit Racing, um, this is kind of like... I wouldn't even say poor man's Mario Kart. I would say like something like Team Sonic Racing is poor man's Mario Kart. But this is like, I don't know, poor man's Team Sonic Racing, I guess. I don't know. This is just trash. Um, not very good. Mega Man X Legacy Collection, which has X1, X2 as a code, I believe. Uh, this is weird, because, honestly speaking, the only games out of this collection that are truly great are X, X2 is pretty good, and X4 is great. Um, all the other ones are kind of just there. Um, but I bought this because I really love X1, and I wanted a way to play it besides on the SNES Classic. We have LEGO Worlds. Um, this is Poor Man's Minecraft. <laughs> Um, it does a lot of things wrong, like, a ton. Um, yeah, I can't, not really good, not very good. We have Disguise 1 Complete, which is a very excellent, uh, strategy RPG. 
Um, a lot of humor, a lot of like cutesy cutscenes, but underneath all of that is just this insanely uh, well thought out uh, strategy RPG where you can actually hit level 900 in it. Absolutely insane. We have Disgaea 4 complete. Uh, so I'm new to the Disgaea series. I actually just got Disgaea 1 like two months ago and I played through it. Uh, I haven't started this one yet, but I've heard good things about it. I've heard it's, you know, a lot of people's second favorite game. It's an Azure 2. Haven't played this yet. Um, yeah, I haven't played that one yet. NBA 2K Playgrounds 2. Um, the best way... This is weird. I really enjoy aspects of this game. But other aspects of it... So, I think the like fundamental gameplay and everything is good. But I think the problem with this game is that it's too much like a free-to-play game. Uh, like, if you... If you boot up the game onto the Switch, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's like literally just like a free-to-play mobile game. Um, and that's really the big problem. Like, it's so close to being good, but it just like barely misses the mark, and it's just pretty good because of uh, certain trappings. Uh, Final Fantasy X, Ten Two HD Remaster. I have a really weird history with Final Fantasy X where... Um, I've kind of always hated it, but kind of not. I don't know. Uh, I feel like I've never given Final Fantasy X a fair shake. We have, uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Absolutely incredible 3D platformer. Uh, yeah, just a really good game. Oh my god, I misplaced a game, uh... Uh-oh. Okay. Alright, I'm not sure if I showed this one off, but we have Unbox, Newbie's Adventure, another 3D platformer. Uh, this one's not as good as the other ones, um, unfortunately. It has a lot of potential. It has a lot of personality, despite you playing as a box. Um, but, uh, you know, it just barely misses the mark, you know? Like, the physics are just kind of off. That's the big problem with it. Crayola Scoot. This is another one that's just barely missing the mark. It's like almost fantastic. You know, it's almost great. And the big thing with this one is the missions. Uh, if this were set up like a Tony Hawk Pro Skater, uh, it would have been great. Like, I would have recommended this, you know, all day. But the missions in this are just really boring and kind of repetitive, sadly. Alright, I'm going to do a quick cut because my camera is going to cut out soon, so I'll be right back. Alright, um, we have Knights of Azure 2, and I haven't played this yet. Uh, I've heard pretty good things about the Switch version of that. We have Troll and I. This might actually be the worst Switch game I own. Um, this is absolutely horrendous. I didn't think it would be as bad as people blew it up to be, but no, it's awful. Like, I was, uh, genuinely surprised with how bad this game is. We have Cave Story Plus, which, uh, I think this is the best version of Cave Story because, uh, it has all of the content and everything of, you know, Cave Story, plus all of the expanded upon content, and then it's portable on top of all of that, and... Uh, the one thing that sucks is that, you know, when you buy this version, you kind of support a terrible ca company. Uh, we have Azure Striker Gun Vault. Um, Striker Pack. This has the first two games, uh, which are really good Mega Man Zero-esque platformer, 2D platformers. Um, very challenging. Uh, very good games, though. Uh, I really like Azure Striker games. We have Brawl Out. This is Poor Man Smash Brothers. Uh, I didn't like it. Um, you know, I don't know. I remember it was super cheap when it came out. And it was right before, not right before, but like four months before Smash. So I was like, oh, okay, this will be like my Smash fix. Uh, no, I didn't like it one bit. <laughs> um, yeah. Adventure Time, Pirates of the Enchiridion. 
this is surprisingly, I think, pretty good, you know, turn-based RPG. Um, you know, I, um, the big thing is it has a really bad frame rate. Uh, this game is not consistent, like, yeah. <laughs> um, but other than that, though, I think it's a very charming uh, RPG, honestly speaking. Uh, it surprised me. I, I quite enjoyed it. Mega Man 11, which I absolutely loved. I loved Mega Man 11. Uh, I felt, I thought that this was the best, like, evolution for Mega Man. Uh, you know, like, 9 and 10 are good games, but they kind of just do what's already established. This, like, actually changed up Mega Man's formula. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see what Capcom does next with Mega Man. The Portal Knights? It's kind of like Minecraft, um, but this is a... With more of a focus on adventure rather than crafting, uh, I'd best describe it like Minecraft and Zelda had a baby. It's pretty good. Soldam, this is a really fun puzzle game, and best of all, it's super cheap. If you're looking for, you know, a puzzle game to play on Switch, pick it up. I like puzzle games. We have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which is, you know, a really great game. Uh... So my thing with Smash is I always play Smash for around 20 hours. You know, I get, I get my money's worth, I think. I think, like, 20 hours of gameplay justifies a $60 game. But I never go back to it after that. Like, you know, like, uh... And the reason why is because every Smash game just has something about it that kind of kills it for me. So, like, Smash for Wii U and 3DS, it was that, like, okay, I played it all on the 3DS, and then it was like, okay, now go buy the Wii U version. And then Melee and Brawl were before my time. And then this one is just the online, the netcode. It's just so horrible. It's abysmal. I couldn't believe it. Like, Street Fighter V has better netcode than this game. It, it, it's insanity to me, you know? Like, and then on top of that, like, so most of my impressions come from, like, the early... 1.0 patch and everything on top of that you'd search for matches and you would never get the matches you like request specifically you'd always get like you know rule sets and stuff that you didn't want and it was so annoying that it just kind of killed the game for me and then on the other end of the quality spectrum is Shaq Fu Legend Reborn I don't actually think this is that bad of a game I saw some people saying that this is like one of the worst Switch games uh I actually thought it was okay-ish, um, I don't know, I have kind of simple taste, not very, uh, critical. Has been Heroes, this is a roguelite RPG, I didn't like it all. Uh, super cheap game, though. With Little Do 2 Plus, eh, this is a 2D Zelda clone, I'm not a 2D Zelda guy, that's the thing. Very rarely enjoy me some 2D Zelda. Lumo, uh, this is a really fun, I don't even know, I guess it's just a puzzle game, but it's not a puzzle game in the normal sense. Uh, this is a puzzle game in the sense that you solve, like, brain busters and move on to the next room. Uh, Fire Emblem Warriors? This is, uh, you know, honestly speaking, I think Hyrule Warriors is actually the better package, even though this is cheaper. Uh, yeah, I just think Hyrule Warriors is a much better deal, because there's so much more to it, in my opinion. We have Ultra Street Fighter 2, The Final Challengers, which is a game I actually really love. <laughs> I've put, I think, 100 plus hours into this game. I've played so many online matches. Uh, the reason why I love it isn't because it's some very well thought out, uh, incredible fighting game. The opposite, actually. Um, trolling people in this game is so much fun. Like, going online and putting your controls to, like, preset and then playing as Violent Ken is just so stupid and fun. It's hilarious. Um, yeah, so I've played this game a lot. Um, but mostly because it's janky. Uh, it's so stupid. I love it. We have Valkyria Chronicles 4, which I haven't played very much. Um, so I'm actually, uh, I've played through Valkyria 1 and 2, not 3, even though 
uh, because that was never released in America, sadly. And then I picked this up uh, right after I played through those two, and I just haven't been in the mood to play some Valkyria Chronicles. Uh, but yeah, though, uh, I know I will, you know, uh, eventually. We have Tales of Vesparia, a Definitive Edition, which is an incredible action RPG. Uh, I was very, very impressed with this. Um, I'm quite a fan of Tales, but I'd never played this one the Tales of series, but I'd never played this specific entry, even though I'd heard people always say it was the best, and I'd probably agree, this is probably the best Tales game, excluding maybe, I don't know, I really love Tales of the Abyss as well, with Poi, Explorer's Edition, uh, another 3D platformer, uh, this one, sadly enough, uh, didn't get the recognition it deserved, because it's a very competent Mario 64 rip-off or clone, what have you. Uh, the thing was, this came out the same day as Mario Odyssey. So, naturally, it was killed <laughs> in sales because uh, everybody, you know, flopped to Mario Odyssey and just kind of skipped this game. This game is super cheap now because of it. Like, I think you can get it for $10. Um, I actually bought this day of release because I felt so bad for uh, the producers and everything. Uh, and I'm glad I did, because I really love me Poi Explorer's Edition, just a really great 3D platformer. Uh, and I love how the Switch had this great renaissance, or started this renaissance, of the 3D platformer. Uh, so we have Xenoblade Chronicles 2, then Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, the Torna Golden Country. Uh, so the thing about Xenoblade 2 is I beat this... And then, I didn't know that they were working on, like, DLC, so, when Torna came out, I was like, what's that? Um, so I was really confused, and then I found out, oh, it's DLC, and, uh, then I found out it was DLC on a cartridge, and everything, which is really weird, uh, but, then I, you know, I, I waited forever, uh, and then this actually went on sale for, like, 20 bucks at Target, so I was like, heck yeah, I'll pick that up, um, but Xenoblade 2 is a fantastic RPG, highly recommend it, uh, incredible game, the, I think the Switch overall had the best, like, first year for a video game console ever, with just so many incredible games, uh, but the whole thing is, is I put like a hundred hours in Xenoblade 2, and I haven't felt like going back to, you know, do the expansion pass stuff yet, um, Although I probably should, because Xenoblade Definitive Edition is coming out very soon. Uh, so we have The World Ends With You, Final Remix. One of my top five, top five, top ten favorite games of all time. Just an absolutely incredible, I don't even know if you would call this an action RPG or an RPG. Um, absolutely incredible game. Uh, the World Ends With You... Uh, it came around, a, I need to make a full video on it, but just know this game means a lot to me as a person. And I think the Switch version is actually the best version of it. Uh, kind of a controversial opinion, I know. But, uh, yeah, I think that the Switch version is the best version of it. Um, I think it controls the best. Oh my god, I'm going to get killed by the, uh, the World Ends With You fans. But, uh... Absolutely incredible game. Highly recommend it if you have a Switch or, you know, if you, there is an Android version. So, if you're into Android gaming, you have The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And, uh, I'm normally not into 2D Zelda. Uh, I don't know, there's just some, uh, for those of you wondering, I got the Dreamers edition of this. That's why my back art is weird. Um, I'm normally not into uh, 2D Zelda at all, normally, uh, but something about this game has always really clicked with me, I don't know why, uh, I think it's because it's very whimsical for a Zelda game, it's very, you know, nonsensical because of the story and everything, uh, and I absolutely love it because of that, uh, and, you know, playing this made it, makes it really hard to go back and play the other Game Boy Color, Zelda games like Oracle of Ages and Seasons, so I'm hoping they do a remake of those two, like they did here. 
then we have Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, absolutely. I think it, this is my second favorite Switch game. Uh, just absolutely brilliant strategy RPG. Uh, very rarely have I ever gotten as enthralled with a game as I have uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. I think, you know, very, very few games draw me in as much as this did, but I was absolutely incess incessed, <laughs> obsessed with this game. Uh, I beat it, and then I literally started playing through it again. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely incredible game. Highly recommend it. Uh, easily my second favorite Switch game. And my favorite game is obviously the last game. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, I have the Explorer's Edition, I believe is what it's called. Um, you know, it, it's hard to talk about Breath of the Wild because basically everything's been said about the game already. Um, you know, it's probably the greatest open world game of all time. It's probably also the greatest game I've ever played. Um, this game is just so incredible. Like, I'm struggling with words to describe, to tell you guys about why it's so incredible. It's just incredible. Like, it's one of the few games I would say, you know, like, if you were to buy a Switch and you only bought one game, I'd say it should be this, 100%. It's, it's just a good game. <laughs> um, yeah, though, so that's my Switch collection. I think I have almost 100 games, maybe only like 70 or something. I'm not, you know, 100% sure. I'd have to count. But yeah, though, so if you guys like this video, like it down below, comment, subscribe, all that good big YouTuber energy stuff. And, you know, have a good day or night whenever you're watching this YouTube, and peace.